Uh, now, all the contestants on The X Factor would love to have the success of Susan Boyle. Mm. She's just released her fourth album and it's called Standing Ovation. Now, Susan's experienced fame beyond the wildest dreams of the little girl that grew up in West Lothian, a girl whose childhood she describes in her own words. My name is Susan Boyle. Today I'm taking you to the street I grew up in, in Blackburn, West Lothian. It's a fairly ordinary area, fairly ordinary, not, not much happening around here. But this is it, the Boyle family household. I was brought back here, a tiny bundle from Bangor Hospital on the 1st of April 1961. I was born of nine, I was the last one. I was the tail end of the family. I remember the place gradually emptying as, as, as they all got their own, their own lives. Well, here it is, the living room. My mum sat on that side, my dad sat on that side. It was usually after they would had a good night out. Huh? We just used to just take a turn and sing. You actually, you actually got up then and stood up and sung unaccompanied, which was quite something. <laughs> that was good. My dad's, my dad's song was uh, Scarlet Ribbons. Scarlet Ribbons for my hair. Well, it was a very important song for my, my father because it's about a... Uh, a little girl's relationship with her father. Kind of an extension of his love for his family. My dad was in the army, and it was then that they discovered that he could sing. And uh, they got many opportunities, you know. They had a, a Drury Lane audition. And his superiors wouldn't let him go, because he was a good soldier as well. They just never got the chance, you know. So in a way, I suppose it was, I'm reliving his dream. My mother was a diamond. She'd help anybody. She was a lovely person. My mother was more of the academic type. Because in those days, you didn't have a lot of money. You had to have money to go through university, so she, she didn't have the money to do it. Otherwise, she could have. My parents were very protective of me because I was the youngest, and uh, people used to bully me at school. But it wasn't the physical kind, it was the psychological kind. And that's the kind that you can't really see. I was about seven when I've got my own room. When I was 13, I got my first record player for my Christmas. And there was, there was two LPs and there was Portrait of Donnie and The Plan. I thought it was great. I was dancing up and down so much that I made a hole in the, the ceiling downstairs. Imagine myself with them, just in the mirror like this. They called it puppy love. Don't be watching us, Donnie, for heaven's sake. Oh, I guess they'll never know. <laughs> the bum was going on everything. <laughs> I didn't realise, though, that a few years later I'd be singing them. Fantastic memories. Nobody could touch me here. Nobody could bully me. This is my sanctuary. I could pretend to be somebody else other than Susan Boyle. I still live here. I've decided to stay in this house. Although I've got a posh house down, down the other side of Blackburn, people thought that I should have moved into there. Well, I like up here because it's near the neighbours, it's near my friends, and I feel more secure. I feel more peaceful here. Despite all the publicity I've been getting and the wealth I've had, to be within your own community and your own roots is natural. Just, you can't always be in the spotlight. You've got to come out that spotlight sometime and just be you. You haven't looked at me that way in years But I'm still here yeah. That's well, so An R went about there, yeah. didn't it? That's so yeah. Philip's comfy, isn't well, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, incredible lengths there. <laughs> yeah. It does. You'd like to go what around. A beautiful no, it's a story. Of tea.